Sorry for the interruption. Uh, so we were talking about horns, and uh, so horns have a solid bone core that's covered in a keratin sheath. And keratin is the same material that makes up your hair and your fingernails. Uh, and these are permanent structures that will grow usually throughout the life of um, a lot of different bobbid species. So, so they're, they're pretty cool. They come in a bunch of different shapes. Uh, some of them are short and pointy. Some of them are big and curly, like what you'd expect to see on a doll sheep. Uh, and then some of them are big and twisty, like this on the giant eland up above me here. And so, so lots of diversity there. Uh, then we have another type of cranial appendage. Uh, these are pronghorns. And what pronghorns have are very conveniently called pronghorns. Um, and they have a permanent bone core and a keratin sheath, a lot like a bobbid horn, but in a pronghorn, the keratin sheath falls off every year and is regrown. Uh, so pronghorn antelope is this guy right here. You might know them from out west, uh, similar to a horn, but different in that the keratin sheath does come off in some species. So, are there is the pronghorn the only living member of that has a pronghorn? It is. Yes. So Antilocapridae is this family. There used to be a lot of them, as you can see here. We've got like this one is Lingaceros with these cool twisty pronghorns. Um, but nowadays we only have the pronghorn Antilocapra americana. So. And were they all in North America, or uh, that's a good were they question. around the world? I think that they're mostly North American. Um, yeah. So. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next one that we have are antlers. So antlers are obviously the cranial appendages that you would find on a deer or other cervids. Uh, so these are things like moose, deer. Um, and antlers have a permanent bone base called a pedicel that is topped with the antler itself. So the antler is the part right above that little, uh, it's called um, a burr sometimes, uh, and that is what falls off every year and is regrown. So they have sort of a similar thing going on to the pronghorns where part of their cranial appendage is regrown every year, uh, but for them it's an entire bone structure and that's pretty cool. Um, so, does it so even yes. though moose antlers look very different than like the antlers that were seen here, mm -hmm. it's the same. They also lose their antlers every right. year. Yeah, so moose drop their antlers and regrow them. The only species uh, that don't shed their antlers every year are some of the Southeast Asian deer. Uh, so there are some really small ones that have very tiny antlers, and sometimes they'll keep them. Uh, for more than a year, or they're less seasonally uh, shed. So, so things that live in temperate areas, like moose, will drop their antlers every fall. Um, these guys sometimes don't follow that same pattern because the seasons are different there. And what do the animals use their antlers for? Is it just a mating display, or do they use them for all kinds of stuff? It's, it's, well, it's mostly for um, using, they fight each other over mate access. Uh, and depending on the complexity, the style of fighting is different. Uh, so really complex antlers are usually used for some sort of grappling. They'll like lock them together and wrestle each other around. Uh, some of them actually use them in behaviors that we think are, are uh, based on marking territory with their scents. Uh, so they'll, they'll rub them up on tree branches and that sort of thing. Um, but, but mostly it's, it's actually the fighting. Uh, so. Combat. <laughs> cool. And I should just say, um, post your questions in the comments below if any of our viewers have any questions for you. Okay, what next? So the last type of cranial appendage that we have in extant, so things that are alive today, uh, even toed hoof mammals are ossicones, and these are the things that giraffe and okapi have. And an ossicone is also a permanent bone uh, outgrowth, so more like a horn core than anything that we've seen so far. Uh, but it's covered in skin and hair, and in Okapi, the skin actually peels away from the top of it, and it's exposed bone, uh, which is a little gross if you think about it. But um, it's, a, it's a completely different type of cranial appendage. And do, we, do they use their little ossicones for the same types of things? Do they fight? Uh, so I'm not sure what Okapi do with them. They must do some sort of combat, but male giraffes actually use their necks to fight. Uh, and they swing their head around kind of like a, like a wrecking ball almost. 
Um, but the, the acetones themselves aren't, I think, as directly used in competition because females also have them, but they don't engage in this neck fighting, uh, at least to the extent that the males do. So overall, with horns, acetones, pronghorns, and uh, antlers, mm -hmm. is it, um, are the males and females both have them? Do sometimes it's just the males? How does that work? So it's, it's very dependent on the family. Uh, in cervids, the deer, only one modern species of uh, deer range or reindeer, uh, which is Rangifer tyrandus, if you're really interested there. Uh, only one species has females that grow antlers. Uh, everyone else, it's just the males. In bovids, um, it's it's a bit of a mix between who has horns and who doesn't. Sometimes females will have horns, and sometimes the females that have horns differ depending on the population within a species. Uh, so it's, it's pretty uh, hit and miss with them. In Antillocaprids, there are about 30% of females that those don't are, Those have, are the pronghorns? Those are pronghorns, sorry, yes. Okay. Uh, so pronghorn females can have horns, usually they're a lot smaller, uh, or pronghorns, uh, and 30% of them don't have anything at all. Uh, but they're so. all the same species? Mm -hmm. They're all until the America. Interesting. And we have some questions from folks. Yes. So Florian Folger says, I walk in a lot of areas where there are a lot of deer, but never seem to see any discarded antlers. Mm. What happens to antlers when they fall off? Uh, I mean, usually they just sit there and... Uh, <laughs> so keep they, looking, huh? <laughs> yeah, keep looking. They, they go through, uh, I would assume, the normal process for bones. They'll dry out. They might get broken up if something steps on them. Um, but I was just in the field last month, and we found uh, a bunch of antlers, actually. So, so it might just be that um, you haven't found them yet, but they're probably out there. All right. <laughs> Kurt Whelan asks, what is the advantage of annual renewal? Seems very energy inefficient. Uh, it does take a lot of energy to do it. And one of the reasons, if you look over here, uh, so these fossil types had these long pedestals with the short antler on top. Uh, and one of the proposed explanations for that is that it's a very cheap way to have an antler. Uh, you get the thing that you drop every year, and, um, and you still have this structure that you can wrestle with, but you don't have to regrow the full length of the antler every season. Um, but one of the things about antlers is that we haven't quite figured out exactly why they drop them. Uh, some people think that it's related to thermoregulation, you drop them in uh, the seasons when you don't have to, or when you're trying to conserve body heat, because it's a big structure that uh, could be losing heat. Um, and uh, that's, I mean, it's really, it's not a well understood process, actually. Interesting. Uh, so, so it's one All of right. those things that we need more questions. And uh, my name is Zach Calamari. I'm just reintroducing myself for new people. I'm a grad student here at AMH. <laughs> um, Alex Wartell asks, what's your favorite cranial appendage? Uh, that is a really good question. Uh, um, I really do like the Olingoceros' twisted pronghorns. Um, and then there are some fossil types that actually I don't have the time to research, but uh, there are things, if you look over here, We've got a group of animals that have um, a big slingshot on their nose. So those are protoceratids, and they're related to camels, and, uh, and they've got this weird nasal horn that branches at the end. I think that's pretty cool. So <laughs> animals related to modern-day camels used to have cranial appendages. Yeah, so it's a, it's a family that is often in... Um, studies of how animals are related to each other linked to uh, camels, the, the family of camels. So Liz Boot from the Netherlands asks, what are the largest antlers now or ancient? Uh, the largest ancient antlers are right behind us. So this is Megaloceros. The, it's often called the Irish elk, but it's not actually an elk. Um, <clears throat> but it's a cervid, and they have the largest antlers of Basically any cervid, there's nothing that has antlers this big today. Uh, today the largest antlers, it depends on I think how you're measuring, um, but they're probably on elk or moose, not actually certain, uh, but those are the guys that have the longest or probably broadest uh, antlers. 
Rachel Owens asks, if an antler is broken in fall, mm -hmm. drops, will it regrow in full the next year? Yes. So the uh, way that antlers grow is actually, um, it's fairly dependent on the velvet. So antlers, when they grow, are covered in uh, really vascular, dense tissue called velvet. And um, <clears throat> if that gets damaged, it can actually change the shape of the antler for that year. Uh, but because it's controlled by genetics, uh, those genes don't necessarily get changed by something like an antler breaking in the fall. Uh, so, so usually they regrow to the same shape every year once they reach their adult shape. Do they get larger every year? How to... it, That also depends on the, uh, the species, but things um, generally, yes, if, if they have complex antlers, they'll grow more tines uh, throughout their life until I think there's, there's a stopping point um, where they, they stop getting more tines, uh, but, but they do get bigger uh, to a point. Great. And we have one last little diorama over here. Or... So it's uh, National Dog Day, so I'm going to show you something that's called a bear dog. That's Amphicyon here. It's actually not a bear or a dog, and it's chasing a little fossil pronghorn named Ramoceros. And if we want to look at Ramoceros from the front, it's actually a really interesting thing. So it's, it's got these appendages that um, are branched like an antler, but they're, uh, they're not antlers. And they're always, when we find these in the fossil record, they're always um, asymmetrical like this. So one is always longer than the other. And it might have um, some sort of implication for, for handedness, but it's not actually the same ant or, uh, appendage that's longer on each one. So sometimes it's the left and sometimes it's the right. Uh, and we really don't have an explanation for that, so it's just kind of a, a cool mystery uh, around Ramoceros here. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Zach, so much. And thanks for tuning in. Uh, come see our fossil deer. <laughs> All right.